Mandy Leon. Make sure you guys subscribe to this channel. What's up YouTube? So about a year ago I made like a top 10 favorite WWE superstar list. In the past year or so I found myself not really watching as much WWE. I Meaning I still watch it every Monday and Tuesday of course. But I find myself more interested in independent wrestling or just wrestling outside of WWE. There's New Japan or Impact or Ring of Honor or anything. And because I'm so interested in so many different wrestlers now that I just can't make a top 10 list off the top of my head. So we're gonna split into two. We're gonna have a top 10 male wrestlers and top 10 female wrestlers. So the next video will be top 10 male wrestlers, but these are my top 10 favorite female wrestlers of 2018. Even making this list by itself was really difficult, so I do have to give a little bit of honorable mentions to Charlotte and Bailey, who I really wanted to put on this list, but I just couldn't find a spot for them. Number 10, Tony Storm. Tony Storm is one of the top, if not the best women's wrestler on the planet right now. I don't think a lot of people even notice about her, but you know she's only 22 years old? Like, what? I just feel like I've been watching her for like five years now. It's only probably been a couple months. She debuted in Impact Pro Wrestling in 2009, making her only 13 years old. Out of all the people on my list right now, she's definitely the top decorated champion. She currently holds three championships, that being the Stardom Championship, the WXW Women's Championship, and she's also the Progress Women's Champion. All three very recognizable titles to be holding as a women's wrestler, so it doesn't really get any bigger than that. Also put this in perspective, she had a WWE tryout in 2014, making her only 18 years old. I'm 18, and I bet some of you guys are watching this are older than 18 years old too. Oh man, aren't we all just pathetic compared to her? Number 9, Becky Lynch. I can say this without anyone disagreeing with me. Becky Lynch is the most underrated woman in WWE right now. WWE sucks at making baby faces in 2018. Example, Roman Reigns. Example, Bobby Lashley. Example, Bailey. But you know who gets constantly cheered no matter what she does, even if she's not doing anything important? Becky Lynch. She is also the first ever SmackDown Live Women's Champion. I think we already know that. Part of Four Horsewomen was the only one to not hold the NXT Championship. That's a little disappointing and a little upsetting. Why she could have actually, when she was a heel in NXT, she was on fire. I don't see why she didn't hold it. But since her main roster debut, I mean, she's done a lot, a lot of participating. She participated in the Women's Royal Rumble. She participated in the big triple threat at WrestleMania. She participated in the big scramble-esque, big cluster crap of women's wrestling at WrestleMania 33 for the SmackDown Live Women's Championship. She participates in a lot and doesn't seem to win much. That's an issue. I believe the first women's main event on SmackDown and also one of the first women's steel cage matches since I think it was like 2002 with Lita. Something like this close around there. But back to what I was really saying, I mean, she is a great baby face. I don't think there's anyone that doesn't like Becky Lynch outside like people who just don't like her because she's not doing anything. Also, for anyone who's ever met Becky Lynch, I think we all can agree she's probably one of the nicest people you will ever meet in your entire life. Number eight, Ivelisse. Where have you guys seen her before? Well, tough enough. We have seen her on Lucha Underground. She is so good at everything she does. I can pretty much say that about everyone on this list, but I really mean that about Ivelisse. She really feels like a mercenary. Like, I'm pretty sure if she walked in right now, I'd be terrified. That girl has zero fear whatsoever. She's on stuff in Lucha Underground that makes me think she should have been like an ECW champion. The girl's good. I could go into more about what she's done on Independence, which is just so much. She's done a lot in Puerto Rico. But also my biggest reason her being on this list is mainly that like, what are you doing WWE? You better freaking build them up, man. Ruining careers. She probably would have been the same character that she is in Lucha Underground or on Independence right now. I'm just saying, like, you had a girl with this much talent on your roster, and because you guys have such a stupid trainer, former trainer, he was there, based off what I hear, not that good. She's definitely one of those people like, wow, we really let her go? Out of all the people, her? Number seven, Jordan Grace. Here's a scenario. So you're driving in your car, right? You're pulling up to the corner, you put on a signal, you're about to turn right, you know, you're getting ready, you're looking both ways, of course, look both ways, make sure you wear a seatbelt. As you start to make your turn, you think everything's all good and dandy, there's this car that was a lot closer than you thought it was before, so you put your whole foot down on that pedal, and you boost down the corner, and you make the turn of a lifetime. It's all happened to us, don't act like it hasn't. Now, Let's substitute your car out of the equation and let's put in Jordan Grace. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, oof, painful. Jordan Grace is the pure definition of what Husky Harris used to call himself. Army tank with a Ferrari engine. That is Jordan Grace. That's. Perfect. I don't know why she doesn't just steal that. The three to four times I've seen Jordan Grace wrestle in person, intensity doesn't describe enough about her. Number six, Alexa Bliss. If you ask me, I think Alexa Bliss is actually pretty good in the ring. I wouldn't say like on par with Charlotte, but like 
she's up there. For one, it looks like her DDT is now her new finish, which is actually pretty cool because a lot of people don't use a DDT anymore, or at least like a standard version of the DDT. I mean, you know it's effective. She killed Bailey's whole career with that. Now, if everyone I've talked about so far and I will talk about, she is the number one talker. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. She doesn't really wrestle like a Sasha Banks and really have like this high risk wrestling style. The person I compare it to the most is probably The Miz, an excellent heel and doesn't do too much in the ring to the point that it could injure her, but also enough in the ring that makes you invested because she can tell a story in the ring without having to throw herself over top rope hundreds of times to get a reaction. That can get dangerous, especially her size, because, you know, there's a lot more space between the top rope and the ground for her short. Number five, Mandy Leone. Now, everyone, Mandy Leone is definitely probably like, the worst in-ring competitor on this list. Why do I have her so high up? I mean, I've met the girl like a hundred different times. Like, she's just really nice in general. I've been watching her since she debuted in MCW when I was like, what was that? 13 or 14, something like that. Velveteen Dream. I've been watching for a really long time. She's progressed in the ring so much. It's actually really impressive. A lot of people always talk about wrestling ability, but if you go watch like her early matches compared to what she does now, she used to suck. I mean, she just wasn't that good. But now, she's actually pretty good. And the same thing I said for Becky Lynch. I mean, anyone that probably meets her knows that she's just a really nice person. I mean, shoot, she was an intro for this video. Hi, Mandy Leon. she was my prediction to win the Women's of Honor tournament. Now she become the champion. There's no doubt in my mind she's gonna win it between the end of this year and sometime before Supercard of Honor next year. Ever since they kind of started the whole Women's of Honor like division, she's pretty much been the face of the entire thing. So it's not a doubt in my mind that she's definitely gonna win that championship soon. Also talking about how well she actually has progressed in wrestling as like an in-ring competitor. She did compete in the finals of the five-star Grand Prix, which was for stardom and it was against Tony Storm. I think she actually beat Io Shirai in like the semifinals, which that's a really big name to go over. And unless they had a lot of faith in you as a wrestler, I'm not putting you over here, Shawar, because she is something else. Also, I've complimented her multiple times about being like a model that actually goes into wrestling and not into WWE, not knowing anything. If she had signed to WWE, I could easily see people think she's gonna be like Eva Marie. Oh, she's just a model coming into WWE, she doesn't know how to wrestle. She started out going straight to the Ring of Honor dojo. Rather than just trying to get signed to WWE because she's pretty, she decided to actually learn how to wrestle. I think there's a lot of respect about her. You guys should really give her a chance if you're not a fan of her yet. You should be. Number four, Sasha Banks. Now, Sasha Banks has probably been my favorite women's wrestler in WWE since, well, since she probably debuted in NXT. Back around the time she debuted in NXT, there's only like three women's wrestlers I actually liked. And that was Eve Torres, Caitlyn, and AJ Lee. She did this stuff with Charlotte and Summer Rae. I was like, you know, she, she's kind of standing out. I like her. And then when I saw her win that NXT championship in that Fatal 4-Way, that blew my mind of what women's wrestling is capable of. Instantly, I just loved her. She was great. Also, she was probably like one of the best heels ever. She's such an a-hole, which really sucks to see her be a face in WWE because it's just not her. Go back to what you were. I love that so much. And then when she had the match with Bayley at NXT TakeOver, oh my God, that was good. That right there was literally the best women's wrestling match I have ever seen in my life. Also, when I met her, she was really cool. She gave me a lot of attitude to have Bayley shirt on, which I appreciate, you know? Kind of kept the gimmick alive. I appreciate that. It's really a shame to see her win a championship so many times because she has such a good come up story because every time she wins it, she loses it in like two weeks, which sucks. She's a four-time women's champion, and sometimes I forget she even had the belt. And she needs to hold a championship and actually be a champion, not be a person with a belt. She needs to be a champion again, WWE. I don't know why I'm saying this like you're actually watching this, but you never know who may be. But if you are for some reason, one, I need a job. Two, push Sasha Banks, because she's good. Number three, Sue Young. Now, I didn't really know too much about Sue Young besides just being like the wife of Rich Swan. I know back in the day when Joey and Candace used to have like a YouTube channel and they did like all the videos. I remember seeing her in there. I didn't really know too much about her besides like, oh yeah, she seems nice. Recently, once she signed with Impact Wrestling, I started to see the whole undead bride thing she has going on. How does one become undead? That's the real questions we should be asking. But once I saw her debut, I was like, you know, that's a weird gimmick, but I'm kind of digging it. So I wrestled a couple times in Impact. Yes, I actually watch Impact Wrestling now. You guys actually should if you have Pop TV. They're actually rebuilding it. It's actually a really entertaining show to watch. But yeah, she was at the Making Towns Classic, which I went to. And when I tell you I have never seen a woman wrestle so many times in one night for one, and each match be so great, that blew my mind in ways I have never seen before. She wrestled four different times, one being a tag team match where she did a lot of the work in the match. I mean, she was putting in like some five stars per match. She earned like 20 stars in one day. The highlight video I made doesn't even show everything because I was so amazed watching her wrestle that I forgot to record stuff. Number two, Kylie Ray. I knew a little bit about Kylie Ray before this just because, you know, she wears all the Pokemon stuff. It's kind of hard not to know who that is. I never really watched her matches or, you know, listened to her talk before. I will say this in all confidence and I know it's true 
because I know it's true. She is the most underrated woman in professional wrestling today. Why she is not booked on bigger shows or signed to an actual company is beyond my path of thought. When I tell you, whoever decides to pick her up, honestly, she'd actually be a really good fit for Impact Wrestling. Whoever eventually signs her, I don't know why she's not signed right now, but whoever does, you have the number one baby face in the world in your company. Use her correctly. You guys don't even need to watch a match. If you guys sit down and watch your entrance, if you do not smile, if you have no happiness going on in your entire body at the moment while watching our entrance, you, sir, ma'am, are the devil. <laughs> to watch everything just one match you will love her I know you will she did train at Booker T school she's a three-time diamonds champion which is like their women's championship she's also the first ever Zello pro women's champion to wrestle with freelance CWA a lot of different promotions you know what I'm actually gonna do in the description down below I'm gonna link like four videos all of them are Kylie Ray matches I mean you just need to click one that's all I need you to do if you watch one match if you still do not like her I can't help you. And number one, Tessa Blanchard. Tessa Blanchard, in my mind, is the creation of everything that a woman's wrestler needs to be. It does not matter what her last name is. She is actually perfect. Perfect is a very strong word and I can explain why. How good is she in the ring? Extremely good. I don't even know what you want to call her gimmick, but just like really self-entitled. I don't know what you want to call that, but it works. It really works really works. Now most independent women's wrestlers they always have matches with guys eventually. Besides like Candice LeRae, out of all the women that I've seen wrestle like guys, I can't think of one where I completely forget I'm like, oh yeah, she's a girl while she's wrestling like Big Brian Cage. Then the whole thought, oh my god, he just hit a girl. That completely left my mind because she is jacked as crap for one. She could probably beat up Brian Cage if she really wants to. No part of her intergender matches ever feel like guy versus girl. You can go back and watch every single one of her matches and you will not find a bad one. I can promise that. She's also, I believe, like only 23 years old, which is mind-boggling considering how much she's actually done. Now, of course, if you want to get into her actual family, I mean, for one, she's the daughter of Tully Blanchard and her stepfather is Magnum T.A. and she was trained by George South. She has every God-given gift to be one of the best wrestlers, if not the best women's wrestler on the planet. She's competed overseas. She's won a lot of championships. Actually, Kylie Ray and Tessa Blanchard had a really good match against each other. That's a match you need to see. When she was in the Mae Young Classic, it was so disappointing to see her lose in the first round. When she got eliminated, I lost all interest in that tournament. But yeah, guys, this video if you really enjoyed it. Comments down below. Tell me your top 10 favorite women's wrestlers. Maybe some people I just said are gonna be on your list maybe they won't be you know it's all about opinions so make sure to like comment share always subscribe and we outie